In this video, I'm going over why you shouldn't care about what Linux distribution you're running. So before you go ahead and run down to the comments and just completely sling a bunch of YouTube hate my way, which I'm sure I'll get a fair amount of, I want to clarify here. Linux distributions are a starting point. And what do I mean by this? People look at my desktop and go, oh, Titus, I love your interface. I love your terminal. I love your file manager. What distribution do you run? And I want to just smack them in the face and just say, it doesn't matter. Because when I'm on Arch, when I'm on Debian, when I'm on Ubuntu, when I'm on OpenSUSE, it doesn't matter. I My desktop always ends up looking like this because I always switch over to KDE. I always switch over and do all the things that I love about Linux, the things I've grown accustomed to. So I really want to start this video off with stop worrying about Linux distributions. Pick a mainstream distribution. Don't pick something obscure, obviously and then just stick with it, learn it, love it. That's it. Because guess what? At the end of the day, it's all based on the same stuff. They all pretty much have the same packages. And, uh, you know, you're splitting hairs when you distro hop. I, I just don't agree with it. The first thing you need to learn is desktop environments. I just mentioned KDE, but there's GNOME, there's Mate, there's XFCE, LXDE. I mean, there's a long rabbit hole of different desktop environments to choose from. And I'm going to be doing videos on how to switch to these desktop environments. If you're in like KDE and want to switch to GNOME or GNOME and you want to switch to a Mate or whatever it might be, instead of going and running out and downloading an ISO and then burning it on onto a USB and wiping out your whole system. That's just crazy talk. I, I can't believe people do this when really at the end of the day, it's just a desktop environment. So that's really my main point. Don't do that. Don't ever switch distributions because you don't like the way it looks. That's your fault. It looks like crap. And you know, on that same boat, I'm going to be making videos specifically over changing the desktop environment. So be looking out for that. Second, learning to love terminal. Let's get, let's face it. I mean, when it comes to Linux, if you're not using terminal, you're kind of gimping yourself. But at the same token, when you're a Windows user and you're used to a graphic user interface and you launched Linux terminal for the first time, it scares the hell out of users. It's just ugly. It looks like something from the 90s, you know, it's or maybe even the 80s. You know, I remember in 8086 and how it looked with the monochrome screen. Yeah, yeah. Linux terminal is not far from that and it scares the hell out of users. So the first thing I like to do is beautify it. Add a little translucent layer, you know, so you can kind of see through it and you can kind of see the windows in the background. And then I add a little theme to it. And then I like to dress up Bash Terminal a little bit and make it all sexy so that it kind of gets rid of that command prompt and it turns into bars. And there's so much stuff you can do to make it even better than this. Heck, I've seen uh, some amazing things from many YouTubers out there of things they've done with Terminal. But I'm going to be making a video later in the week about beautifying terminal. Uh, so be watching out for that one as well, because I think I'm going to be making that uh, about two days from now or maybe tomorrow. We'll see how my schedule works. But I absolutely have to get a perfect working terminal. And you should, too, because you'd be um, you'd be surprised at how much you'll learn to love it. And then when you go back to Windows, you're like, oh, crap. I have to do this by actually launching a, a menu or I have to actually launch the word, web browser and download a program. Uh, all that stuff just kind of sucks without terminal. So learn to love terminal, but you can do that by making it not so scary and not so ugly. The third thing, keyboard shortcuts. Oh my God, every, every desktop environment has these. And oh man, I, when I first came to Linux, I didn't really understand the power of the keyboard shortcut. I mean, yeah, I've done auto hotkey and other stuff in Windows and downloaded third party programs to do some nice macros, but Linux, by default, you can assign a shortcut to any application, to any command, pretty much by default. KDE, I just launched settings. Within a minute or two, I have all my shortcuts right there. So if I want to launch Chrome, I just hit super C. If I want to launch terminal, super T. If I want to launch file manager, super F. All these things. And there I am. 
so when I go back to Windows, I'm like, God, I'm so much less efficient because I don't have all my hotkeys like I had in Linux. Yes, I could probably download a third party program and get everything close to how I had it, but it's all so seamless in Linux. And uh, you should really look into that. If you're not using hotkeys, you're really missing a big part of Linux. So with that said, when it comes to Linux distributions, well, it's not just the desktop environment. I hear you. It's the package managers. It's how it installs programs because it's drastically different from one distribution to the next. You know, and there's no denying that. But the syntax and all that stuff can be learned. And honestly, it's not that different. I've switched to pretty much every mainstream uh, distribution out there in Linux. I've tried them all. You know, when it comes to Debian-based systems, it's all APT install. If it's OpenSUSE, it's Zipper install. If it is, you know, Arch-based systems, it's going to be Pacman-SYU. It's kind of kind of a weird syntax, but nothing that a manual or a dash dash help couldn't give me in terminal. And then, you know, you got your rel based systems you got centos fedora all those and that's using dnf and yum those are all different package managers but guess what yum isn't that different and it's all little little tweaks here and there and it's you know if you like that distribution sure stick with it learn that package manager installer but at the end of the day, they're all installed packages and they all work pretty much the same way. The only difference in distributions is the design philosophy. Most people in the Linux community hate non-free or proprietary software, so they don't include those repositories by default. So an end user coming over from Windows is going, WTF, this worked in Ubuntu, but it doesn't work in this distribution. Well, that's because you didn't install the repository for non-free because the actual person running the distribution has something against proprietary and non-free stuff, which pretty much Linux is founded on being free and open software. So <laughs> that's not a knock by any means. I get it. But at the same token, God, do you really have to make it so hard on end users coming from Windows that, you know, want to actually download Steam, for instance, or, you know, God forbid, a Kodak to play a movie. You know, these things really, I understand why they're locked out, but at the same time, they don't have to be so complex. They don't have to be so hard on the end user, but you as an end user should just know no matter what distribution you choose, you need to probably install these repositories because if you're going to play games and movies and all this other stuff, you need non-free. You need those proprietary things to make them function. It's just most distributions don't include them. So you get around, you understand all the basics here. With that, pretty much every distribution looks pretty much the same once you have a good grasp on it. But there also comes a time where you need your Windows-based software. I get it. And sometimes Wine just isn't hacking it or it's just not compatible. And I really don't like dual booting anymore. I really don't think I'm going to continue my Windows partition on my main machine here just because uh, the only thing I was using it for was my Oculus Rift. And, you know, at this point, I'm just like, I don't even care about it anymore. I think I'm just going to eBay it and then just wipe that section out of my hard drive because it's not necessary. But I do have some Windows proprietary programs that have to run in a Windows environment, not some compatibility layer like Wine. So I launch into virtual machines and I've done every bit of the VM emulation type thing you can possibly think of. And I've, you know, traversed all of that. And my recommendation is to you is if you're using GNOME, GNOME boxes is really simplistic and great for just installing a sample version of Windows and it's pretty clean. I really like its layout. And if you're not using GNOME and you want to use something different, I highly encourage VirtualBox. VirtualBox is actually pretty intuitive and you can easily install Windows on that. And really what that VM gives you is the freedom to just say, hey, that's right, I need to launch that one proprietary program that I just can't get an alternative for in Linux. Yeah, launch into the virtual machine, pop open that app, use it, close it down, and then shut down the virtual machine when you're done. 
It's a little cumbersome, but usually with the slimline version of Windows, my boot times are about, you know, five to 10 seconds, not too bad. But on a poor performing system, I understand that's another 30 seconds to a minute and that's no fun, but it's the only workaround we got right now. And if you have that and you just can't get it working in Linux, it is an option. So this whole thing kind of turned into a little bit of a rant, but I wanted to at least give you some rationale to why I say distributions don't matter and really what I plan on doing with future videos and uh, my YouTube extra time that I'm going to be spending on it. And I really want to flush out tutorial training videos based on Linux as a whole to where it doesn't matter what distribution you're on, it will appeal to you. You'll be able to learn more about it, dive deeper into Linux, and also it'll stop some of this fractures that we have. A lot of the Linux community is divided in all these camps, all these distribution camps, and it doesn't need to be that way. I don't like that, and that's why I stopped talking about distributions really on my channel altogether, why I stopped kind of making videos. I make the occasional release video. I'm guilty of that, but at the same time, it's only major releases from major distributions. I'm not covering any obscure distributions just because I don't see a point. My whole point is to make Linux adoption happen. And to achieve that goal, I need unity. And to get unity, I need people to stop thinking about distributions. And, oh, well, I'm using Arch, that doesn't apply to me. Or I'm using Ubuntu, that doesn't. No, I think really at the end of the day, we need to retrain how a lot of people are thinking about Linux and stop this distribution or stop this search for that silver bullet where it'll just work perfectly out of the box. Because honestly, you can put me on any distribution now. You can put me on Ubuntu, you can put me on Debian, you can put me on OpenSUSE, Arch, you know, go down the list, you know, Fedora, whatever it might be, and I can modify it to do all the things I do in here. It's just distributions are a starting point, and I need everyone to get that point. And then I need people to learn. I need you to actually go out, watch these videos, and then learn the information to where when you want to switch your desktop environment, instead of installing a whole new ISO and burning that, and then wipe it out your whole system and making yourself miserable, you just run two commands from terminal and then reboot your computer and you'll have your new desktop environment and you'll be like, this is amazing. I completely changed my desktop environment in literally a couple of minutes. And that's what I want to get to, because after getting to this point, I have loved Linux so much in just such a short period of time to think it's only been six months of me doing this on Linux full time. Actually, it's been five months of Linux full time. It was November and, you know, it's just now getting to May. It's really only been about five months, five and a half months. That is insane. And I don't get why people keep talking about distributions and making this community fractured. It's a wonderful community. So all I request is just stop and learn because that's all it took. Once I learned the basics of Linux, everything's gravy. So I just want to get you there. And with that said, let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments section below. Am I just completely crazy? Am I off my rocker? Probably a little, but that's okay. I love where I'm at and I'm very, very passionate about getting you to where I am because, ah, it's such a fantastic place. So with that said, I'll see you on the next video.